remember activations are what is most important to understand our activations here we have on this chart all of the planets sprinkled throughout the body graph if you have never done this I highly 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 recommend it so because this planet wherever those planets happen to be they were present alive activating turning on you know imprinting that specific gate and line either at the time of birth or 88 degrees prior so here is the potential energy of a person and now that you have studied planets and how those planets can show up you can get a feel or a flavor for how that energy shows up I first started doing this putting people's planets on top of their body graph in my profit potential coaching because I felt I needed uh, more of a visual reference as I was keynoting the deeper layers of the planetary um, activations in psychology because that's what I work with the magic square in the profit potential coaching and I can tell you so much more opened for me in keynoting for that person if I put those planets on top of the body graph and you know worked with them in context so here's an example you can see these planets hanging out in a dormant potential activation dormant because this person it does not have definition right so you can get a feel for now you know hopefully where the gates are and what those numbers are you can get a flavor of what that energy is going to be like when it turns on right we know that Saturn over here is going to be heavy and serious we know that Neptune is going to be elusive and maybe veiled we know that the Sun is going to be the core light that there's a lot of energy that's building up and building up and it might come out with a tremendous release when it is activated turned on and now there is energy light that shines into the world so I'm not even going into keynoting. I'm just talking about planets here. Yeah, planets in activation or in a dormant potential. So here is an example. Check this out in this, the, the thing that just right, really strikes you when you first look at this G-Center. And you look over here at this heart that's activating that G-Center. We see two Venuses. And we see that is Mercury. And we see Moon. So then we know that Mercury and Venus are dancing together in a channel, creating that empowerment of needing to be first and initiation into the higher self, the higher realms from the willful determination. And we can see that there is this quality of off and on for one of these gates. And we can see that there is this, you know, the values in relating the mores right the moralistic relationships we have the Venus is both here in this area of activation can you see how even just now at, at the beginning of looking at this chart you can get a flavor for different aspects of this person's function in the life because there's planets there we're not even looking at lines we're just getting a flavor of those planets that are there if we look up at the throat center, we can see that there's an Earth hanging out in that throat, that undefined throat, and Plutos, both Plutos are actually up here. And we also have the nodes of the moon, the south nodes right here. Whoa, look at all of that heavily weighted definition down there at the bottom of the body graph. So we can see we find another Neptune. We see Uranus and Earth that's really creating that definition. Uranus and Earth. There's Mars up there in that sacral, and there's the moon again. And then we can get a flavor over here. There's that sun. I know that that's the conscious sun, and, and this sun is conjunct with Saturn in the gate of crisis. We have this channel that is mating a design of reproduction, but also the creative channel of the defense circuit. And that would be grounding for him. And then we know that there were, Saturn would lend its flavor of seriousness and time. Time. We know time is a big thing for him. Wow. And then both Jupiters. Look at this. Happy-go-lucky, good fortune, good luck. Both Jupiters creating a channel. 
I don't know if it really hits you in the same way when you look over at that body graph and you see that Albert Einstein has, you know, Jupiter's in the channel. Oh, yeah, great. But when I see the image, something more just unlocks for me. And then we can see that that Jupiter is hooked in with the node, both nodes. Do you remember what happens when Jupiter or when any planet is conjunct a node? This man had a karmic fulfillment of purpose related to that Jupiter. And then we can see the other Mars and Mercury also contributing their flavors to that channel. So I don't know about you, but I really liked that. That was super fun. So the potential energy for the person looking at those planets there in that body graph gives me so much more data to play with, to feel into as far as activations are concerned. So maybe you might do that with your, with your body graphs sometime. Just take little images, copy and paste onto your body graph and just play with keynoting, the poetry of keynoting. Now remember definition, when there's a channel with both gates activated, that center connected to the defined channel or gate, or a gate in a defined center, creates energy that is fixed, consistent, reliable. And because of this, our definition is where it is best for us to make important life choices because that is the authority in the life. And how our definition is configured gives additional indication for how the energy will interact with the world. So the qualities of the planets show us how we are designed to interact with the world and how that energy is put together is going to show us fundamentally how the energy is going to react to the world as well. Is it going to be Mars-like? Is it going to be Venus-like? Is it going to be Jupiterian? You know, so not only from the planetary activations, but also, of course, how is that planet affecting that line? Taking all of that into context. So here we have Albert Einstein, and we know that 70% of who he is is going to be that right angle cross of Eden, the one four. So we know he's going to be very fixed. We know that that's going to be um, part of his influence out into the world that's inconsistent because it's not consistently turned on. That only certain people are going to see that light, and only certain people are going to get that grounding depending on who he's with, depending on what's aligned for him, what comes into his fractal field as a fourth line, what comes into his sphere of influence, what he's interested in getting to the bottom of, the details, the experiences with which he builds a composite database of what life is about. We know one fours really much, very much about studying. If you have a 1-4 in your life, in your practice, a harmonic profile, they really, education is one of the most important things you can advise for them, regardless of type. We know if they're a projector, especially because they're a projector, but also a 1-4 needs a broader base of education. So you would teach that person in that way. And in, you can see uh, what we've done here. See how these are kind of faded out? I love, Katja recently showed me how to do this, how she layered, used layers to remove some of the activations from being solid full on the other, on the each side. So you can see all of these are full. All of these are expressed except for right there. These, these one, two, three, four. So in reality, when you're looking at this person's chart, he has a lot of planets always activated, always dancing, always on, in full force, whatever that force means for that planet in that channel or in that uh, gate activation. So these are the places where this person is going to find their stability of purpose and their consistency 